garage. Can we get our food outside? Okay, so I guess it's important when you're coming to Ossetee Island, what is it, Ossetee Seashore, there's a national park and there's a state park. We went to the state park, but we're thinking we may be actually reserved at the national park. So uh, we're gonna go check it out, see what happens. ranger talking to somebody else over there and she was pointing out these three horses here and they're all named and the rangers seem to know their names she said some of the red ones are tough and they just have to look to see which way the mane goes on them and then they also have a book that they can look up this baby here um, is one of three that has been born so far this spring and all three of them have been girls fillies it's just amazing that they know their names yeah. i mean how many are there for the last year there are six boys here the national seashore park for us to the only had one night available so we were only gonna be able to stay one night but Kimberly was able to get on the state park website the state park is right there right over there so we are gonna spend one night here in the National Park and then two more nights in the state park okay. they're right there there's horses right over here ponies I guess they're ponies This brown and white horse right here is the mother of this baby horse. The folks on the golf cart are actually volunteers for pony patrol for the islands. The brown and white one, the big one, is the mother of the filly and her name is actually Autumn Glory. So I can't wait to let Autumn know that. so you can keep your food hidden from the horses. Just like Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the same. We are testing out the new setup. You've seen it, I think a couple glimpses of the table set up like a desk across the window with the office chair right here. Now we've turned it sideways and this is the other way that we wanted to use it. It's actually, it feels really nice. Right here in this beautiful setting, we got the big window. I can see out the window behind Kimberly. I'm assuming she can see out the window behind me. Mm, you're pretty tall. If I move, <laughs> if I move like this. Just a nice white folding chair and the office chair. I do think I want to see if I can get these arms off of here because they're kind of in a way with this and see if it works without them. That would be really great but other than that the lamp fits perfectly in here looks like it was kind of made for it because where this bumps out it like fits perfectly against the window and look at that gosh look behind that lamp look at that that's what i'm looking at and that look at that that's what i'm looking at too well we're having leftovers from the seafood joint we went to with kimberly's aunt and uncle 
last night. We had a really good time with that. What do you think of the new setup? Yeah, I like it. It's nice. Yeah, you like the view? I do like the view. It's really nice. I love it. It's like our own little private restaurant. We can take it wherever we want to go. So as we're sitting here eating and looking out the window, I just now realized that the folks next to us have a cargo conversion. If you saw our video with Mark and his cargo conversion out in Quartzsite, you know they can be pretty awesome. And it reminded me that upcoming, we have another cargo conversion with Kevin from Indiana. You guys are gonna love this. It's gonna be a very technical tour of a really neat solar setup and a really quality cargo trailer that he converted, or he's kind of in the middle of converting to a camper. Pretty awesome. Are you guys like enjoying silence or? Mom's not enjoying silence. She just can't get anything. <laughs> with T-Mobile and the National Park here, it's not a very good signal. I've got a little bit when I switch it to 3G, but Kimberly... Nothing. Nothing. Probably Verizon and AT&T and everybody else is probably fine, but T-Mobile, not so good. I am able to watch YouTube videos, so uh, they just, you know, um, what do they call it? Loading? What do they call that? What do they call it when it's loading? Buffering? Yeah, they, they are buffering a little bit, so. It's a good day today and not tomorrow. There's no time to borrow today. Well, something's got to do today. It's a good day today. It's a good day today. So to show you a little bit about how we set up power the national park and i believe also at the state park we're going to later today they don't have any power hookups any kind of hookups at all really i think there is dump station we need to find that out when we leave out of here but for right now we've got water in our tanks we've got our generator we've got propane and we had emptied all our black and gray tanks before we came so we're in good shape but let me show you how we hooked up power to try not to annoy our neighbors um, or ourselves really. The generator quiet hours are from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So uh, there are people here that have solar. That would be awesome because then you can charge those batteries up or just having a battery bank period would be awesome because you could charge them up and use them overnight with an inverter. And then you're not making any noise in the daytime. But we do have a pretty quiet generator. It's running right now. You probably can't hardly hear it. I do hear a couple other generators running. The one I think I hear the loudest is coming from a Class C. I'm not gonna show you because the point is not to embarrass the person. They gotta use their generator. They gotta have their power and their coffee in the morning. That's why I got mine going already this morning. But there is an advantage. We looked at some fifth wheels that had generators built in. And I thought, that's kind of cool. It'd be cool, especially you're boondocking in a Walmart parking lot or something like that. It's easy access. But I also really like to remove our generator far away from people as we can. And we have two 30 amp extension cords, one 30 amp cord off the camper and then one 30 amp extension cord. And so we can move our generator pretty far away. Let me show you what we got. So we had the generator cabled up and locked in the bed of the truck right here, as you saw in our last video. I was able to take the plastic tub out of here and run the generator right there. And I got plenty of uh, electrical cord, 30 amp cord, come all the way back to the generator. So if we wanted to boondock in a situation, nobody around or what have you, we could easily leave the generator right where it sits, run it and be fine. And it's not very loud. But if you look around here, so here's the truck and then we've got neighbors right there and right there, right there, all around us. So here's what we decided to do. We've got all these dunes back here beyond that is the ocean. We've got our cord hooked up right here and then we ran it all the way down here. As you can see you can hear it a little bit more over here. That's why we put it behind the sand berm here. This sort of natural sand dune and 
point it out to the open so that the wind and the, the sand will absorb the noise. And it's not right up there by our camper or by anybody else's camper. Because of all the sand, I put this plastic tub that had our blocks in it. I set that in the sand. That way we're not sucking up a bunch of sand in the intake or getting sand all over the bottom of the generator. So, something to think about how you're going to set up your generator to cause li as little intrusion as possible on your neighbors and yourself. Nobody wants to hear it running, including us. In fact, that's why we went with the Champion 2000 watt inverter generator suitcase style. It's super light. You carry it around pretty easily. You can tell it's not very loud at all. And it runs a long time on a little bit of fuel. If we ever need to run, say, the AC or something off of that, we could buy another one. It's only about 450 bucks. So we could buy another one, hook them together with a kit, and then we could run our AC too. But a lot of times when you're full-time RV living, you're just chasing that 70 degrees anyway. Uh, in our case, we seem to be chasing the cold. So we just need more propane than anything. But that's our setup for the generator. Uh, hopefully we can go see some horses today and then we'll head over to the Ossetique State Park. Oh my gosh. Can we get out of here outside? Look at there. Is there any more over there? Oh my gosh. How did I not see them? Look at that. What the heck? <laughs> Autumn and her bonnet. Look at this, you guys. Right out the window. Odie just doesn't take this stuff too well. <laughs> he gets a little nervous. Look at that. How awesome. And those are the guys that just were visiting us over here. That is awesome. I'm gonna say that's what it's all about, but it's all about a lot of things. Full-time RV living or living on the road, nomadic living. Look at this. This is our home right now. It's incredible. It's incredible. You can live like this. Wow. Delaware? I hear We you. went through Delaware and Maryland. That is from Delaware. Delaware. Uh -huh. States travel through. Nice. No. <laughs> so we are getting ready to leave. We just had the one night at Ossetique National Shoreline. So we're in the National Park. Tonight we move over to the State Park. But we just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of what our site looked like. We're in the Oceanside Loop, Site 26, right on the ocean. Right over that sand is water. And this morning the horses came right up into our site and they were walking around the camper. It was incredible. And then they have the picnic tables with the boxes. And then there's the other side. So not a great big site, but it was good enough. Site 26, Oceanside Loop. already know we are at the Aztec National Park campground. The sites they do not have electricity or water or like any kind of hookups or anything. They allow generators from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and they do have a dump station that is right outside of the campground. Okay so this particular dump station it slopes away from the drain. You know what they say it runs downhill. To help out a little bit I broke out the blocks on the passenger side and almost leveled it up so now we got everything flowing correctly. Check-in time at the state park is not till 2 and check-out time was what, 11? 11. 11 o'clock at the national park. It's almost 1 o'clock I think and we're like, hey we got a reservation, is there any way we can park? And there's a sign right there that says strictly at 2. So if you've got reservations at Ossetique State Park, don't show up early. And there's no big rig parking down here near the beach for the store or the restaurant or anything. So we're gonna head back to the visitor center and wait an hour and come back and try again. They were very nice though, really nice folks. Volunteers working, so. So 
a wild YouTuber. <laughs> All right, everybody else must have had their alarm set. It's 2.01 and there's the line to get checked into the state park. Apparently, we reserved a site in E-Loop, which is not pet friendly. There's apparently loops that are pet friendly in this park and some that aren't. That's the first for me. I've never seen that before, but. So we're gonna go up to the ranger station here and they're gonna try and figure something out. Okay, they got us all fixed up. We got another site. We're gonna go to site 270. Very nice, everybody here was really nice. The volunteers at the front gate, the rangers, everybody's cool. Very particular on the rules though, so make sure you look closely at the website. <laughs> we just got to our campsite at the state park and look who was waiting on us. Thank you. This water is pretty flipping cold right here. Feels good on the ankles, but I wouldn't go swimming right now. How's the water? You wanna go swimming? I'm good, thanks. It's a wee bit chilly. <laughs> so Autumn and I are walking along the beach and we found these really beautiful purple shells. Look at that. And then Autumn is the best at finding sea crabs. <laughs> Look at that. Giant piece of sea glass. I think this is the biggest piece I've ever found. But here it's really hard to find sea glass. They do a good job of keeping their beaches cleaned up. <laughs> so you don't find a lot of sea glass, but the ones you do are really pretty. The roads that lay open are many. When the old ones gone under the knife. right out our window. Beautiful little baby, the white stripe, like a lightning bolt. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's why you gotta lock up your food there. The little baby sniffing that bucket of food. So close, I almost can't film it. On Assateague Island, um, there are two main theories of how the horses got onto the island. The first theory I know of is there was a shipwreck and all the horses just kind of swam and kind of washed up on the barrier island um, that is Assateague. And the other one is that farmers would bring their um, their farm animals over to the island and just let them free roam and graze because it is such a small island that it's not like the animals can go anywhere so yeah so we had a really good time at SD National Park and State Park it has been on my bucket list since we launched um, when we were talking about some of the places we wanted to go I know that that was one that I said I really want to go there she's been talking about the horses on the beach the whole time yeah so I was super excited to finally head that way and it did not disappoint no we had a great time and we went to both of the parks the National Park and the State Park and for us we felt like if you can get into either one of those you're gonna have a comparable experience and right. uh, you're gonna have a good time you're gonna relax and en enjoy yourself right yeah don't don't be disappointed if you can't get into the national park and you get the state park or vice versa right and i believe both of them you can get day passes or a week pass and so you could stay at one and drive through the other or hike or what have right. you and i know autumn and i were a little concerned when we moved over to the state park that maybe the horses weren't there but clearly as you see in the video they were there they came to see us yep well as always thank you all for coming along with us if you enjoyed the video please 
subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and as always, leave comments. We love reading all of them. and try and get back to as many as we can. On that note, we're going to have a good day. And we hope that you have a good day. We'll catch up with y'all next time. Bye. <laughs> you need to put that in like slow motion. Hey, them! They're so cute! <laughs> they look like lambs almost. <laughs> Max, you like going into the park? You ready to get to the campground? <laughs> You're cracking me up, buddy. Too funny. Don't hit the pedestrian. Don't hit the pedestrian. He's so sweet, buddy. He's so sweet. And Max is ready to get to relaxing. Although he's been sleeping all day. Huh, buddy? <laughs>